the benefits of obedience. If you look at the book of 1 Samuel, you see the importance of obedience. Obedience to the word of God, obedience to God. Obedience to the men of God, obedience to the women of God. If you look at the book of 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. This was Samuel talking to Saul. After Saul refused to obey the word of God, the command of God, what God told Saul to do when he went to war with the Amalekites. But rather than for Saul to obey, to detail the word of God, brought to him by Samuel, he decided not to. And this shows the importance of obedience. You see, he says, so Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in brought offering and sacrifice? If you, if you look at the NIV version, it says, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? As much as in obeying the, word, the Lord. It says to obey is better than, say it again, to obey. One more time. To obey. Tap your neighbor and tell them. Tell them to their face. Look at them. Tell them to their face. that To obey is better than sacrifice. That's what the word of God says. So as you can see the importance that God places in the obedience of his word. We see the importance of what God places in the obedience of his word. It says when you obey, it is better, far, far better than the sacrifice that you have to put in place after the problem comes in. If you did not obey. So it's better for you rather than have to deal with the sacrifice. Why don't you obey the word of God? Saul refused to obey the word of God. And if you know what happened, from this moment on, that was the end of Saul. That was the end of Saul. So if we really want to look at the illustration, when, when we're looking at the, I'm talking about the benefits of obedience now. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis. That's the first, first one in the Bible. Genesis in the Old Testament. Genesis 26. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis 26. So we're going to read. We're going to read Genesis 26. I want, are we read? Are we there? Are we there? Can we stand up? We're going to read the word of God together. And this is with power now. We're going to read the word of God with power. So we're going to read Genesis 26 from verse 1. We're going to read on to verse 12. Are we ready? We're ready. One, two, go. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistine and Hira. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all this land, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abram, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all this land, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my church, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the man of the place asked about his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say, She is my wife, because he thought, Lest the man of this place kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to behold. Now it came to pass, when he had been there for a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistine, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obviously, she is your wife, so how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I said, 
lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people my son have lain with your wife, and you will have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Let's sit down. This morning, we're talking about obedience. In Genesis 26, it started with the word, it says, there was a famine in the land. And when I'm talking about obedience now, I'm talking about obedience when things are not even going well. You see, there was, it says there was famine in the land. And it said something there that it says this famine was similar to the famine that happened when Abraham was alive. You see, there was the same, this was the same famine that happened when Abraham was alive. But there was something that was different this time. You know, it says when the famine happened to Abraham, Abraham went to where? Abraham went to Egypt. So it is very easy sometimes when you've experienced what someone in front of you experienced, it is very easy to go in that same footstep and want to do the same thing. Because it was easy for Isaac to now decide, this is another famine. Let me go to where? Egypt. And God is saying, your, your success is not in Egypt. Abraham's success might have been in Egypt. But he's saying, for you, your success is not where? In Egypt. Some might say that your success, you know, some of it might have been moving to Florida, might have been moving to New York, might have been moving to so many places, and God is telling you that your success is in this Alabama. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I know you don't want to say it. I understand. You see, when I came to this land, when I came, when I came to Alabama, my plan, I just finished my fellow residency in Atlanta. And I said, I was coming, let me come to Alabama so I can finish my master's in public health. And while I'm doing that, then do my fellowship. So once I'm done with my fellowship, then I'll go back to Atlanta. Because I look, you know, I was driving while I was in Atlanta. I was coming to UAB for my master's every other week. And whenever I come, I tell myself, this land is definitely not mine. This Birmingham, this Alabama, uh -uh, this is not possible. I'm going back to where? Atlanta. So everything had been planned for Atlanta. Not knowing that God had other plans for me. So I came. I did all my, I did everything. God set some things up for me to know that this is my land. So, while I was doing the fellowship, I said, I went for my board exam. It happened to be in Atlanta at Emory University. I stayed with a friend of mine. The place, his house to Emory was like 20 minutes. The exam was at 8.30. I was on the road at 7 o'clock to go for the exam. By the time I knew it, I was speaking in tongues in order for me to be able to get to the exam hall. So by the time I got to the exam hall, I got to the exam hall at 8.25. So if I was just five minutes late, I would not have been able to do the exam. So immediately I finished. So all my friends were already waiting that what is going on with this man. Why is he not showing up? You know, so, so immediately I got into the exam hall. I sat down. We started the exam. When I finished the exam, I said, God, I, now, I understand now. I understand what you're telling me. I told, I said, ah, okay. So once I left Atlanta, everything about Atlanta just disappeared in me. It disappeared. Then immediately I came here, my boss said, you, you are going 
no way. Do I'm talking about from the first from the I came for fellowship here. My my the six months into fellowship, he already told me you're going where? No way. You're staying here. This is your own gear. Even though I wanted to go to Egypt, I wanted to go to where everyone, you know, they all talk about Atlanta, Atlanta, everything about Atlanta. That's where things, I understand, you know, and, you know, to make things, I, I know my wife was not happy about it. Mm -hmm. Because she's Atlanta, she wants to be in Georgia. But God says, this is where your land of success this is where you're going to experience your breakthrough. This is where you're going to get the things that you need. All the things. It's, it's, this is it. You see, so, so, so we see something that happened to Isaac here. It is, was easy for Isaac to follow what Abraham did. Which was to go straight after the famine, during the famine, to go straight to Egypt. But there was something that happened to Abraham and to Isaac. It, God spoke to him and said, do not do what? Do not go to Egypt. He says, stay in this land. And he said something to him. There were things that I promised, that God promised Isaac when he said, stay in this land. He says that I will bless you. He says, if you look at Genesis 26 20, and 3, he says, dwell in this land. And I will be what? That's the best that you can ever have. That's the best assurance you can ever have. He says, God, God told Isaac, if you dwell in this land, I will be with you. And not only that I will be with you, I will do what? Bless you. And not only that I will bless you. He says, I will bless you and your descendants. So, that means Isaac was already covered. Even though sometimes we think, we think ahead, we we'll believe in th some things, that this is the best plan for me, and God is telling you, uh-uh, that is not the best plan for you. I have something more, more better for you. So it's important for us to be able to listen to, to the word of God when the word comes forth. Because if you see, the, if you look at Genesis 26, verse 6, it says, Isaac decided to listen to what God told him. He says, so Isaac did what? He says, Isaac did what? Isaac dwelt in where? The land that initially he did not want to stay in. Because sometimes, because we deal with a God that is not just Alpha, a God that is Omega, that already knew the end right from the beginning. God already knew that success of Isaac is dependent on him staying in Gira. It wasn't independent on him staying in Egypt. So he decided to stay and listen to the word of God. And so he says, so Isaac dwelled in the land. You see, these are the things that followed, you know, if you look at it, there's some things that you at, at time them six Ps. Six Ps that followed Isaac. Which I mean, I meant by the benefits of Isaac obedience when you are obedient to God there's some things that you experience number one thing that Isaac experienced number one thing if you read he was talking about Isaac decided not to show Rebecca as the wife and decided because she, he, he was afraid that the wife would be taken away and he would be killed but there was something that happened when, 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 when you decide to be obedient to the word of God, God will find a way to protect you. Number one thing you see there, number one was protection. That you see when you, are when, when, when you decide to be obedient to the word of God. You see, and you know how it happened. It says, Abimelech decreed to everyone. It says, if, you, if anyone touches this man that person is going to be put to death and you know one thing that, that i was reading there it wasn't only about the man he says if anyone touches this woman too that person will be put to death 
Even though you are dwelling in a, in a place that you don't know. Even though Isaac was dwelling in Gira, the protection of God was there for him. Because at the beginning, you might think that God, you know, that the protection is not there. That you are in a place, in a foreign land. And God is telling you right now, this morning, that his, his protection is upon you. Even though you are in a, in a foreign land. Number two things that you see when you are obedient to the word of God. You see it, if, if, you, if you look at the, in verse 12, it says, Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the land in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord what? Blessed him. Number two thing that you see is provision. Provision. But when it comes to provision too, you also have to be ready. Because there was something that Isaac did. Isaac did what? Isaac did what? Let me, let me hear. Let me hear. Let me hear. Let me hear. Isaac sowed in the land, right? I mean, can you imagine? You're in a foreign land. And you're sowing even with the little resources that you have. And it says, and I'm very sure it's not that all others do, did not do that. But there was something special about, about Isaac that was not present in the Philistines. It says, you see, when, when Isaac sowed in the land, it says that Isaac was able to experience an abundance in the land. And, you know, sometimes when we're in the land, you know, sometimes when, when, when we're in the land, we look at ourselves that we haven't arrived yet. And God is telling you, part of sowing is your time. Part of sowing is what? Tell your neighbor. Tell you. I think your neighbor is sleeping. Tap your neighbor. Tap. Tap your neighbor. Tap her. Tell her that part of sowing is your time. You can sow your time in the house of God. Even if, even if you feel that you don't have the money yet, you can sow what your time in the house of God. You can do things in the house of God that money cannot even buy. And it says that, that when you do that, when you're obedient to the word of God, through your sowing, it says that Isaac was able to experience what? Hundredfold. The third thing that he, Isaac experienced was prosperity. That's the third P. He experienced prosperity. First of all, he experienced protection. Number two, provision. And number three, prosperity. That's one thing that he experienced. If, if you read further down, it says that when Isaac experienced the prosperity, it says in verse 13, it says, the man began to do what? Genesis 26, 13. It says the man began to do what? Prosper and continued what? Until what? Oh, to me, oh, that is deep. I was, I was, you know, if you if you look at the NIV version, he actually talks about that Isaac moved from riches into wealth. How many of us know that they're different? Being rich and being wealthy. They're completely different. I was reading, you know, I, I read a definition of um, wealth from this man, uh, Robert Kiyosaki. I read a definition of wealth from Robert Kiyosaki. You see, when, when you're rich, you, you still haven't arrived there yet. You can satisfy your needs and all that. But a situation can change things. When you're rich. And can make you from being rich. Into poor poverty. But when you're wealthy. Kiyosaki says that. Definition of wealth is. The number of days you can survive. Without physically working. And still maintain the same standard of living. And not only that. It says the number of days you can survive. And even your family. Without working. It says, so, so wealth sometimes is the is, is a measure of time, not of dollars. That means when you are wealthy, no matter 
the problem, no matter whatever, whatever happens, you will still be surviving. You still be outstanding. So this man, despite the things, despite the famine, despite the people around, you know, the man moved from rich into wealthy. And you know one, what accomplished wealth? One, what accomplished wealth? When you get wealthy, this is the same thing that happened. It says, people in that area became jealous of you. When you, when, 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 especially when you're in the land that's not supposed to be yours. And you're bl getting blessed in the land. And people in the land that owns the land are not experiencing the wealth that you're experiencing. They start getting upset. And then they start looking. What is the problem? Is it only you? Why is it you come into a place? Everything is working for you. We've been in this same place for 15 years. That's when they start giving you history. And they don't understand. For me, I never liked history. That is, that is the worst subject in my life. Thank God that you had the option of dropping. I, had to, I dropped it very, so, I mean, very quickly. Never liked history. So, so, you know, they will start giving you history about the things, you know, that, ah, you cannot do what you just did. Ah, you have to take one year to be doing this and that. And then you just came in and then you're finishing, you're doing, ah. People start getting jealous of you. Start getting upset. And that's one thing that also happens. Even though you get the prosperity, you get the protection, you get the provision. While you are going through all that, you can also experience persecution. Because if you read there, it says, the people in that land were envious of Isaac. And they got so envious to the point that the man, the king of the place, kicked Isaac out. He says, Isaac was kicked out of Gira and was sent to the valley of Gira. You see, sometimes when we go through that, we start getting, you know, so sad about it. Not knowing that there was more for him in the valley of Gira than in Gira itself. You know, sometimes when we experience a change, when, when, when something happens to us, we start getting so upset. We, sometimes we start blaming God for it, not knowing that for you to get to where you need to get to, sometimes you need to be fired. Mm, I know you don't want to hear that. Mm. Sometimes, when God promises you that you're going to get to one level, if you don't get fired from that le this level, you're not going to get to that level. So quit getting so upset because you lost your job. Quit getting so sad because something did not go your way. Instead of you getting sad, like, talk to God and say, God, what is it that you have in stock for me this time? Whenever you are going through a difficulty, whenever you are going through a problem, it is not the time for you to start asking, you know, to get so upset, you know, sometimes so upset with God, that God has decided to let you down. It is a time for you to, to revisit it and say, God, what message are you giving me in this situation? What is it that, you know, for you to know that if you are going through this, that means there's an elevation that God is about to put you on. It is not for you to start getting so worked up and so messed up and so sad. And sometimes, not only that, you, get, you now become like them, the one that kicked you out. You know, you become so sad with them. You now not become vindictive. You now start saying negative things about them. Instead of you to know According to Deuteronomy 14, 14, it says that, you know, that the, 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 the battle is the Lord's. That let God do your fighting for you. That you should hold what? Your peace. 
So, you see, so when he moved, when he was moved to Valley of Gear, that was where he started, they started digging the, um, wells. He talked about wells that were dug. He says, the first well that was, that, 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 that the, the servants dug was called what? Essek. And the meaning of Essek means contention. Because you realize, when he dug the first one, the people of the village came and took it for him. The man did not stop. Did the second one. Sit now. The meaning of that means hatred. They were still hating him. And they took that from him. Until the third one died in. And that one, if you, if, if you read it, Rehoboth, when he docked that one, it says something about it. Let's, let's, let's open our Bible to it. I want us to read that one. In Genesis 26, verse 22. This is after Isaac and Satan had been taken away from him. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did know what? So he called his name. What did he call him? Call it. Rehoboth. Because for now the Lord has made room. And we shall be what? Oh, tell someone, tell someone next to you that God has made room for you and you shall be fruitful in the land. Tell them, let them know it, that no matter what the enemy has done in the past, that you shall be fruitful in this land. This land that God has positioned you, that has placed you, you shall be fruitful in this land. You see, when your time comes, no matter what has happened in the past, they will not be able to fight over the blessing that God has given to you. You know, sometimes you might, you know, sometimes God puts some things as a test. You know, he puts some things as a test. Your essek as a test. You know, your sitna as a test. He wants to know how you're going to deal with all those things. Are you going to deal with it with discouragement? Or are you going to deal with it with, 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 you know, fighting back? When he expects you to continue to pursue after him. And so Isaac continued to dig after and was able to get into Rehoboth. And there was an enlargement. There were fulfillments that happened. Even though at the beginning there was provision. It led to persecution. But he was able um, to pass the Essek and Sitna test and be able to move into Rehoboth. You see, after this man moved into Rehoboth, there was something that says, that, that said in the word that he was able to move into a place called Beersheba. But there's something important about that. That we're going to see later. There's something important about that. You see, when all these are going on, when, when you are obeying the word of God, and things appeared to not be going on well, people are antagonizing you. These people are doing things to you that appeared not to, 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 you know, that you're looking at yourself, but this is not what God said about me. Like I was saying, everything, take it as a test for you. That God positions some things to be as a test for you. To see how you're going to, because if you cannot handle the little stuff, it's going to be difficult for him to put you on the light, bigger, bigger level. A child that cannot deal with little stuff, or even an adult that can't deal with little stuff, it's going to be difficult for him, for God to put that person on a bigger stuff, bigger level. So God wants to see how you're going to handle the little things, the little, the, the, the little, the, you know, the, the little afflictions that you, you're, you're going through right now. God wants to see how you're going to deal with it. If you can deal with it in the right way, then with the right attitude, then he can look at it that this is a man that is ready for his robot. Because if you are not ready for your robot, 
your real birth will not happen. You will still, you know, God can move you through another Essek, another Sitna, and see how you deal with it. And the longer you keep on dealing with that, that means you're not dealing with it well. So it's for you to realize that every situation that you find yourself, there's a reason behind it. It doesn't mean that God has left you. In fact, it means that God is in there with you. Because if, 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 if you are not of God, things will go so well. Satan will not bother you. Will let you alone. You know, will let you just be by yourself. But when, when he knows that this is a special person, that's when Satan will be doing all sort of things. And God will sometimes will allow it to happen because at the end of the day, he wants to see how you're going to be able to grow up with it, with all those things. The sixth thing that you see when it comes to obedience of God is peace. Is what? Oh, say it like you mean it now. Peace is the next thing that you see. If you remember that all this, why all this was going on, when, when Isaac moved and was in Beersheba, you know that Abimelech and two of his friends came looking for Isaac. They kicked Isaac out, believing that Isaac was taking all the blessings. And Isaac left. They were still poor. And so they came looking for Isaac. And Abimelech said, I can tell that the presence of God is with you. You see, even your enemies will know. He says, I can tell that the presence of God is with you. And so, he says, we have come not for fight. We have come for peace. He says there, if you, if you read it further, he talked about uh, uh, Isaac now preparing a feast for the people that kicked him out. Oh, I can guarantee nobody in this place will prepare a feast. If you know you prepare a feast, lift up your hand so that I can see the ones that lie. Huh? You see, you're not even bored. You see, he, he's lifting up his hand like this. He can't even do it up like that. Huh? <laughs> so, I can imagine some of, some, some of us will go out and start jubilating and start saying, hey, my enemy has come back. See, see what my enemy, the people that were against me, see what they, see, now they're coming to beg me. So, but this man decided to fish them and they requested for an oath that because they said they see how mighty Isaac was. And they came and said, let's have an oath. And so they ate. They woke up in the morning and they went their way. And Isaac had peace. But that was not the end. He said, after they left, Isaac decided to dig another well. And dug that well. And the well was called Well of Sheba. That was where the name of the city. He says, if, if, if you read it, it says this name of that city is still there till this day. It says the name is still there till this day. So it's important for you to know that when the word goes forth concerning you, it is important for you to be obedient to the word of God. When you're obedient to the word of God, there's things that will happen to you. And like I was saying, it's not everything that's going to be rosy. Not everything is going to be rosy. But you should know that even though things are not rosy, 
there's always a reason for what is going, what I'm going through right now. If you remember, you know, like the word says, when Lazarus's family called on Jesus, Mary, you know, called a matter, called on Jesus, that the one that you love is about time. And Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. That is what? Is, is what is what is what it's for his glory that means every situation that you find yourself in that you might think is negative always have at the back of your mind that this is for his glory so that when you look at it that way you know that god even though you're going through that situation there's a way out that god has positioned for you so that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, ah, indeed, God had been with me. Even though I thought he wasn't with me. But now I realize that he really has been with me. Even though I'm dealing with hatred, I'm dealing with contention right now. Even though I'm dealing with so much difficulty right now, but I know that at the end of the day, I will experience my Rehoboth. That God is going to make an enlightenment of my coast. That I will experience greatness. I will experience blessing. That at the end of the day, I will live to declare and to talk about the greatness of God. To talk about what God has in plan and in stock for me. If you believe it, let that person shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So it is not for you just to, to, be, to, to just focus on the issue. You should be glad when issues come. Because you know that that means there's a breakthrough about to happen for you. If you can turn it, if you can look at things that way, you will get out of a lot of problems that way. If you look at all the issues that come through, that there's a breakthrough that's about to happen to you, you will think differently. Rather than focus on the problem, you start focusing on who can solve the problem. You can start focusing on God. You put your attention back on God. You start praising God. You start lifting him up. You're not going to be dwelling on the problem. You're not going to be dwelling on the situation. But you're already looking. Focus on the one that can solve the situation for you. That is what I want you to think about from now on. From your obedience, even though there might be prosperity, there might be provision for you, but there can also be persecution that attaches to it with the success that you're going to have. But while you're going through that, it is important for you to persevere and know, indeed, that God is still with you, that He's present. Because if you read further, when He go to Bathsheba, God appeared unto Isaac. Let's read it. Let's read it. That's with it. That will be their end. It says in verse 23, it says, Then it went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord did what? It says the same night, and said, I am God of what? This is remembrance. God telling him, that I'm God of your father. If I can be God of your father, I'll be the God of you. It says, I am God of your father, Abraham. It says what? Because what? Because what? It means, no matter what you're going through, it says, do not what? Tap your neighbor and tell him or her, do not fear. Fear is of the devil. Know that he's with you. Always is with you. So you see, it says, For I am with you. And it didn't end that way. It says, I will do what? 
Same thing I told him at the beginning. God reminded him. God reminded him and said, I will do what? I will bless you. Not only bless you, I will bless your descendant. He says, I will multiply them. That's what the word says. It says, for my what? This is things that he spoke to Abraham with regards to the blessing that he says he's going to show to him. And he said, he will fulfill those blessings that he had promised Abraham because of the fact that Abraham obeyed the commandment, was obedient to the word of God. So we see there that God will bless you. Whether you say amen or not, God will bless you. Not only you, it will bless your descendants. Oh, so that means if you feel that you're single right here, for you to have a descendant, that means something got to happen, right? Eh? I pray for someone in this house that God will show you your future partner. Not only that, you will connect and you will know that indeed is the right person for you. And you know that indeed she is the right person for you. Everything will work together for the good of the two of you. You see, because the word of God has to be fulfilled in your life. If you're single, it has to be fulfilled because it will bless you. It says I will bless you. Not only that, I will make your descendant to multiply. So for you to be for, for multiplication to happen, something's got to happen. You got to be engaged. You got to be married. And you that are already married, that have even the son that do not have kids, God will bring forth for you. And when he's talking about descendant, that means he expects more. He said, blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. Rabo seke, yeah. He say, when his quiver full of them, that means there are more to come. Hmm? So if you've done two, there are more to come. If you've done three, more to come. If you've done, th amen now. And spiritual children are part of it. Uh -huh. Amen. So, I mean, you heard the story about the 60 something year old woman that had a baby. So it's not too late. Uh huh. It's not too late. Uh huh. So, but because God's word is going to be fulfilled now. Uh huh. God's word is going to be fulfilled. Descendants from you, it says God is going to bless you. You will be a blessing to this nation. You will be a blessing. Not only to yourself, not only to this church. You will be a blessing to this nation. Because what it means is it's taking you from just this low level, lower level. It's taking you higher. Taking you higher. And higher. And it shall be so in your life in Jesus name. Thank you father. Glory be unto your holy name. Thank you for your children this morning. Thank you for lifting them up. For taking them to another level Lord. Father in heaven. Ah, the promises of you, the promises of, of, of that you've given unto us today, Lord, concerning protection, Lord, concerning provision, Lord, Father, concerning prosperity, Lord in heaven, Father, give it unto your children, Lord, Father, that even when persecution comes, let us recognize it, ah, Father, and be able to move on and not get so disappointed and so depressed, Lord, Father, Lord, your presence, Lord. Father shall be ours in Jesus' name. Father, the peace of God shall rest upon us and we'll experience you the more. Father, we thank you. Glory be unto your holy name. And finally, we see something that Isaac did here. After God appeared unto him, he says, So he built an altar 
there and called on the name of the Lord. God expects us to spend time in him, with him. To spend time in his presence. To have an altar that while we're going through, while he's blessing us, it is important for us to come back and bless him with thanksgiving. To bless him with it, with what? I, I say it loud now. I know you want to talk about. I know we want to talk about provision. I know that, you know. And one thing I saw there, when it comes to provision, it says something about. The word of God talks about a good man. It said a good man leaves an inheritance. Not only a good man, a good woman too. Leaves an inheritance to who? to his children's work. Some of us we've mortgaged the life of our children. We've already used our children's social security to claim things, and then we expect the children to do well. Some of us we've used our children to to collect disability, and we expect the children to be successful. I don't. I've never seen someone. Collecting disability that is rich or wealthy. So it's important for us. If anyone has done something like that, it's important to go back and change things. Whatever it is. Because the word says that you're supposed to leave an inheritance for your children's children. It is not for you to eat all the inheritance right now. It's for you to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Because when you can do that, that means you're perpetuating the wealth. That means the wealth will continue because there's nothing that can happen that will destroy that wealth. I don't know. I was about to skip it. Something just said I need to mention that. I don't know who is doing that. But it's time for you to change. Whatever it is that you're doing with your children, future is important for you to revisit and change it. Give your children the future that you expect for them. 